So I've already talked about uh, the kind of hazards that we might see at plate boundaries. And now I'm going to look and um, talk a little bit more about why people uh, might live in these high risk areas, even though they know that there are these hazards. So first of all, there's this map which is showing us cities around the world and plate boundaries. These cities have got a million people in them at least. And I can see that there are definite places where there are cities that are really, really close to plate boundaries. So we've got Japan, we've got the west coast of America, the Caribbean, even parts of Europe all have areas where there are cities of over a million right close to um, plate boundaries. So there has to be some reasons why people choose to live there, but also might be forced to live there as well. A reason why people might choose to live in a volcanically active region like Iceland uh, is because of something called geothermal energy. What geothermal energy is, is where there is water under the ground and this water gets heated by the very, very hot volcanic rocks below the ground. What that provides is it provides this hot water and this hot water can be used to heat homes, but also, we can also use that hot water to create steam. And what we can do with that steam is we can use the steam to turn turbines. And if we turn turbines, that means we can create electricity. And if we can create electricity from um, the steam, then we can help use it to power factories and businesses and homes. So having geothermal energy in a country can be very, very positive, And it's a reason why people would choose to live near volcanic areas. Volcanic regions can often be very spectacular and um, they interest people greatly. And so often it attracts a lot of tourists, as we can see in this um, left hand picture in the Philippines, people have come to see this uh, volcano erupting. Because of this, that means that um, in places where you do have volcanoes, whether they're active or not, um, you can um, get people setting up businesses to cater and profit um, from these uh, tourists. So we've got an example of people setting up tours so you can tour um, volcanic sites but also um, we've also got kind of gifts, gifts shops and uh, souvenir centers that get sent up um, and also things like hotels. That where people go and stay while they go and visit all these places. So tourism can be a very, very attractive feature um, for people and a reason why people would live in those areas. Another reason why people might live in volcanic regions is because many uh, volcanoes, when they erupt, actually produce ash. And that ash, when it settles and breaks into the soil, it can actually release minerals. And that, those minerals make that soil very, very fertile, which means it is very, very good um, for growing crops um, as the ash that has broken down and the minerals that have been released act as a fertilizer. This is Mount Vesuvius, which is in Italy. And as we can see, this area around it is very, very green, and that's because the soil is very fertile. But people have decided to live in this area, even though this, play, uh, this um volcano has erupted because if I look down here there is all these patterned fields and when I go in a bit closer I can actually see that these fields are full of vineyards so they are very very fertile soil so this area is particularly good for for growing crops um, lemons but also uh, vines for making wine and so it's another reason why people would choose to live there because of the very fertile soil. The last major reason why people might decide to live near a volcano is because it can often um, produce valuable minerals. So we can see people here are mining something uh, which is called sulfur, which is that yellow substance there. And this is because they can mine uh, this mineral and then sell it on to make profit. Um, sulfur isn't the only thing that comes out of volcanoes. You can also get gold, you can get diamonds, and also copper. All of these are very valuable, and especially in, in LICs, um, 
this will be used to make profit. As you can see here, this is very, very dangerous. There's lots of volcanic gas being produced. And so it's something that people choose to do, but it's high, high risk. So valuable minerals, are another reason why people would live um, in hazardous areas. There are other reasons why might, people might live in hazardous regions. Um, one of them could be the, uh, poor education. They are unaware of the real risks um, of living next to um, you know a hazardous area. Um, this often happens in LICs where education levels are generally lower. Um, but also it could be the fact that people lack the actual resources to be able to move. So if you are a low income and you have no money, then you uh, literally can't move. Um, so it might be the fact that you worry that you can't get a job somewhere else. Uh, these are reasons why people are often forced um, to live uh, in hazardous areas. And we can see that there's a link that often the poorest people often suffer from, you know, poor education and, and the resources. So these are the people that will be affected the most uh, by any issues that arise, any problems um, to do with hazardous events. One reason why people might decide to stay in a, in a hazardous area is because of the perception they have of the risk. And this is to do with hazard management. So HICs often have the kind of resources to design buildings that can be protected against some hazardous events. Um, and so because of this, uh, because they can design against hazards, what we find is that often in those areas that the perception, what people believe of risk is lower. So they believe that kind of they won't be affected. And we can see this with this building here uh, on the left. They've built this um, building so to, to stop it from collapsing in an earthquake with all these wires on the outside. And therefore, the people inside that building, they feel safer. And when they feel safer, people are unlikely to move from that area because they don't think it would, would damage them. So in countries where they can afford to manage the hazard or they can design buildings against certain hazards, particularly earthquakes, then people often stay in those areas because they feel like the hazard won't affect them. The last thing to mention is that these cities that are often in high risk areas where we can see this picture on the left hand side, this is a Japanese city. These have taken centuries um, to build up and they are, you know, worth thousands and thousands of uh, billions of dollars of investment. So to abandon them completely seems very unlikely. Not only that, these have become the homes of people and therefore this is where their people's families live, as you can see in this picture here. And so people have an emotional attachment to them and therefore they are where they work, where they live, and therefore they are very unlikely to um, just abandon them because of a hazard. So the last thing to kind of focus on here is the saying that these are places that have built up a long, long time and often people have very uh, deep emotional connections to them. And so it would take a lot for them to leave and having a hazard or the risk of a hazard isn't always enough for that to occur.